Family Theater presents Dorothy Warrenshold and Robert Rockwell. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Flight to Bermuda, starring Dorothy Warrenshold. And now, here is your host, Robert Rockwell. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Flight to Bermuda, starring Dorothy Warrenshold as Joe. Sure, hold the wire. Just a moment, please. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve words at ten cents a word. Mm-hmm. Oh, hello? Send us a night letter. That'll be a dollar twenty cents. Not at all. Thank you. Anything else to go out, Miss Edison? Well, let's see. There's one coming in on the tape right now. Delivery? Uh, Mrs. Ann McLaughlin, 416 Wentworth... Uh, say, those two messages you have are for down near 8th Street, aren't they, Barry? Mm-hmm. Chandler Place in Cosgrove. Well, you can pick this one up on your way back, then. Okay. You feeling all right, Miss Edison? Hmm? You look kind of tired. Oh, I guess I am a little tired, Barry. Tired of the night shift, this town. I don't know, things in general, I guess. You know what you ought to do, Miss Edison? What's that? Get married. <laughs> I'll pass the word. No kidding. I'll bet there's a lot of guys you could marry. Not in Finchville. I've conducted a survey. Then you ought to get out of this town. Bet if you went to some place like Chicago or New York, you'd have to beat them off with a stick. Oh, <laughs> that'll be the day. No kidding. You look kind of pretty when you get all fixed up. Why, thank you. You know what I mean. <laughs> Only in Finchville could a girl get a compliment like that. I mean it. Oh, I know, Barry, and, and thanks. Really. I... I guess I didn't say it very well. On the contrary, that's the nicest thing that's been said to me by a male over 17 in the last two months. I'm only 16. Oh, I, I knew there was a hitch to it. Oh, gee, I, I'm sorry, Miss Addison. Oh, forget it. Here, you better get started on these deliveries. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I better. I'll be back in about 15 minutes. Okay. And Miss Addison? Yes, Barry? I'll be 17 in November. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah. See ya. Well, I guess I better paste up that other message. Mrs. Ann McLaughlin, 416 Wentworth. Congratulations. This is to notify you. Have won Sweet Tooth Syrup Slogan Contest. Please contact Midwestern Travel Agent, Mr. Charles Morris, Chicago, for flight to Bermuda, plus accommodations. Two-week vacation. Oh, how do you like that? Two weeks in Bermuda, just for winning a slogan contest. Oh. Two whole weeks away from Finchville. Mrs. Ann McLaughlin. Mrs.? Oh, well, what's a Mrs. winning a thing like this for? It should be a Miss. Uh, a Miss. Oh, Miss Joe Addison, for instance. Not a Mrs. Ann McLaughlin, whoever that is, or Mrs. anybody. Her husband probably won't let her go alone anyhow. Mrs. Ann McLaughlin. And she doesn't even know she's won it yet. Nobody knows. But Miss Joe Addison. Mrs. McLaughlin, Mrs. McLaughlin. Well, 
Oh, oh, Mr. Morris. What's the matter? Are you so excited you've forgotten your own name? Why, no, I... Well, the aeroplane was making so much noise. Oh, yes, of course. All set to get aboard? Got everything? Tickets? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, too bad your husband couldn't have come up here to Chicago to see you off tonight. Oh, yes. Well, he's so busy, you know. Yes, he's going to be a lonely man these next two weeks. Well, yes, but he, he told me to have a good time. <laughs> and I'm sure you will. Oh, I- incidentally, about your purse. Oh, oh, my purse. Yes, I'd almost forgotten. I notify the railroad that you think you left it on the train. Oh, you, you needn't have gone to all that bother. Oh, no bother at all, Mrs. McLaughlin. I know what it's like to lose all your identification. I had my wallet stolen about two years ago. I know very well what it's like. Oh, I'm sure it'll turn up. Oh, let's hope so. Lucky for you, you had that telegram in your suitcase. (laughs) Otherwise, we would never have known who you were. (laughs) Well, I told the railroad that you bought your ticket for Chicago at Finchville. You did? Yes, they'll trace it down, Mrs. McLaughlin. Don't you worry. But I don't want them to... Um, make such a fuss about it. Oh, no fuss, I assure you, Mrs. McLaughlin. They might just find you left that purse on your dining room table back in Finchville. Oh, no, no, I know I didn't. Now, don't you worry. Oh, oh, look, they're rolling the passenger ladder up to your plane. Better get aboard. Oh, wonderful. And I just assume you'd forget about the purse. Forget it? Yes, I don't want my husband to worry. Now, you put this entirely out of your mind, Mrs. McLaughlin. I'll send a wire to your husband explaining what happened. Oh, no, no, you mustn't. I'll write him. It won't be any trouble at all. No, my husband, you see, wires, they upset him terribly. I'll write. Well, just as you wish, Mrs. McLaughlin. Now, just forget your cares. Get aboard the plane and have a wonderful time in Bermuda. Oh, yes, wonderful. And and thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, uh, Morris. Your name is McLaughlin. Oh, that's true. (laughs) Well, goodbye. Yes, goodbye. And don't you worry, Miss McLaughlin. We'll find your purse. Uh, uh, pardon me? Yes? I, uh... Well, you probably don't remember me, but I was on the plane from New York with you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I noticed you weren't dancing, so I thought maybe since we're both staying here at the same hotel, uh, at, at the same hotel in Bermuda, I thought I might as well introduce myself. Oh, yes, I've seen you around. <laughs> well, my name is uh, Stan, Stan Johnson. How do you do? I'm Joe uh, Ann McLaughlin. Joanne. No, no, that's my father's name, Joe, not Joanne. Oh, Joe. Mm, yeah, my name's Ann. Ann. Yeah. But we both have the same last name, McLaughlin, you know, my father. I see. Well, that's why you got mixed up. Yes, I, I understand. Oh, isn't it beautiful down here, Mr. Stanson? Uh, Jansen? <laughs> Stanson. Oh, <laughs> Johnson. Stan. Johnson. How do you do? Oh, my. Oh, 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 anything wrong, Miss McLaughlin? Oh, no, 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 it's... Uh, well, it's just that I'm so excited to be here in Bermuda at last. Oh, your first trip. Yes, so... <laughs> Oh, isn't this just the most beautiful place in the world? Well, I guess it is at that. I suppose you vacation here lots. Well, hmm? I come here pretty regularly, but uh, not exactly a vacation. I'm a salesman for a hotel supply house. Oh, that must be wonderful to travel. I, I mean, all over the place, well, isn't sometimes it? Well, uh, sometimes you get wishing there were some place you might settle down permanently. Oh, no. If I had the chance, I'd travel and travel. I'd, I'd go to Paris and London and Rome. And Finchville. And... What do you know about Finchville? Uh, well, I wanted to find out your name, so I sneaked a look at the hotel register when we got here this morning. Oh, I see. My, well, That was very naughty of you, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was at that, but, well, I was interested. Well, I'll forgive you this time. Oh, say, incidentally, you're going to be amused to know this. You know, it looked like you signed your name Mrs. McLaughlin. It did? Yes. It did? It looked like that, really? <laughs> of course, I see you're not wearing a wedding ring. Oh, no, no, I never wear one. I mean, well, not being married, of yes, course. Yes, that's what I meant. I guess your hand must have slipped. When was that? Well, when when you were signing your name. On the register. On the register? On the register. Of course, yes. when I was signing my name, I see. Well, that's what happened exactly. You see, my hand slipped, and it made the miss look like Mrs. <laughs> I figured it was something like oh, that. Oh, silly thing to do. Those pens are terrible. Yes, well, since you are a miss... Oh, I you're... am, yes. My, my handwriting's not very yes. good anyhow. And since all that pretty music's going on in there, I, I uh, wondered if you'd care to dance, miss. What? Well, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> What are you thinking about, honey? Hmm? You've hardly said anything all afternoon. Well, I was thinking that tomorrow it's back to Finchville. Well, only for a little while, eh? As soon as my transfer comes through... Oh, Stan, I, 
I don't think we ought to make such definite plans. Hey, what goes on here? Well, let's just enjoy the buggy ride and not think too far ahead. <laughs> In the first place, darling, this is a Landau, not a buggy. The driver would be insulted if you heard you call it that. Well, I was speaking figuratively. And in the second place, I love you. How can you be sure of that? You hardly know me. I know all I want to know. Oh, Stan, we... Oh, I've had a wonderful time. It's been the, the two happiest weeks I've ever spent, but I... But nothing. I love you, I want to marry you. Now, what's complicated about that? But you don't know anything about me. Now, what's to know? Have you a deep, dark secret in your past, Miss McLaughlin? My name is... I know, your name is Anne. Honey, I was just kidding. Well, well, how do you know I don't have a dark secret or something? <laughs> you don't know, Stan. Oh, sure, sure. You're a hunted criminal. You're probably traveling under an alias. Well, what if I were? Oh, honey... Would you still want to marry me? Would you, Stan? If what? Well, if I were a, a, a criminal, a, a thief... Honey, a... what is eating you? Answer me. Good grief. You win a slogan contest, get a two-week vacation, meet a guy who falls in love with you, and when he proposes, you want to know would he marry a criminal? Well, would you? Well, are you a criminal? Well, no. No, of course not. So now, why the crazy question, huh? Good grief. Well, I'm just trying to show, that, show you you don't know everything about me. Well, so you don't know anything about me. I could be... I could be Jack the Ripper. Oh, that's nonsense. Well, I could be Jack the Ripper. Well, I know all about you. Everybody in Hamilton knows you. Oh, yes, indeed. What do you know? I sell towels. Well, that's more than you know about me. You come from Finchville. You don't know where I work. All right. Where do you work? In a department store. Oh, no, no, no. Now the secret is out. She works in a department oh, store. don't be Honey, snide. what's this all about? What are you trying to tell me? Well, it's just that is I... Is there someone else? Oh, no. Because no. if there is, you don't have to let me down easy. Oh, there isn't, Stan, really. Because there... if there is, you tell me. Because the one thing I can't stand is being lied to. You, you can't stand that. Oh, no, no, ma'am. That's, that's insulting, degrading, pointless. But sometimes it's, it's almost necessary. No, dear, it is never necessary. No matter how unpleasant the truth is, it is a thousand times better than a lie. But... Sometimes it can be very hard to tell the truth. Only liars find it hard to tell the truth. No. No, excuse me, dear. This is a very big thing with me. Uh, I can see that it is. Yes. Yes. Now, please, Anne. Hmm? The truth. Is there anyone else? No. No, Stan. There ah. isn't. Uh, and that's the truth. <laughs> well, then it's settled. We'll get married next month in Finchville just as soon as my transfer to the Midwest comes through. Oh, but Stan... No, 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 that's all. Now, honey, this is to be our last night together, at least for a while. Let's not spoil it arguing. All right, I won't, Stan. Now, as soon as we get to the hotel, you run upstairs and get dressed for dinner, no, and I'll meet you in the lobby at 6.30, because I've reserved a table at the Ace of Spades for tonight, and I've got a little something I picked up in town this afternoon that I want you to wear on that finger. <laughs> These bags up to 714. Here's the key. Oh, Jim, excuse me. Yes? Oh, oh, Mr. Johnson. Dining in tonight? No, no. And probably won't be back to the hotel until, well, a little before midnight. I just thought I'd leave word in case any messages come in. Oh, very well. Now, uh, we'll be at the Ace of Spades, Jim. We? Miss McLaughlin and I. Oh, very well. Mr. Johnson, Ace of Spades. Right. Any time before midnight. Mm hmm. And uh, you'd like any calls put through there? No, no, no. Not just any. But if a call comes from my New York office, huh? Especially if it's the boss, Mr. Leitner. Right. Call from New York, Mr. Yeah. Leitner. That I would like put through. Oh, fine. Put through Ace of Spades. <laughs> Trying to get the company to transfer me back to the States. Well, don't tell me we're going to lose you, Mr. Johnson. Well, if you do, your loss will be my gain. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on getting married. Well, congratulations. Oh, Tell me, you. who's the lucky girl? Well, the uh, young lady I'm taking out to dinner tonight, Miss McLaughlin. Well, wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. <laughs> Say, tell me, uh, mm -hmm. is she a widow? Who? Uh, Mrs. McLaughlin. Mrs. M oh! <laughs> oh, I know what you're thinking about. No, no, no. No, Jim, it's Miss McLaughlin. <laughs> when she signed the register, her, her hand slipped. I beg your pardon? No, I say it's it's Miss. It's Miss McLaughlin, not Mrs. She isn't married. But there's a message, a phone call that came in from the airport this afternoon for her. Yeah, so what of it? Well, it was a, for Mrs. Joseph McLaughlin from a Mr. Morris. He'd just gotten off the plane. Yeah, but it, it, it can't be Mrs. Well, I took the message myself, Mrs. Joseph McLaughlin of Finchville. And from whom? From Mr. Morris. 
something to do with a slogan contest she won. He called from the airport about 4.30, seemed very excited about something. I couldn't reach her. Mrs. Joseph McLaughlin? <laughs> yes, I, I just phoned the message up to her room just now. She, she seemed to know who it was. And, and, and where, is the, where, where is this guy Morris? Has, has he been here? Oh, no, but he, he has a room reserved. Said he'd be here as soon as he get through customs. Mrs. I expect he should arrive any minute now. She lied. She lied to me. Is anything wrong, Mr. Johnson? I'll say there's something wrong. What is Mrs. McLaughlin's room number? Well, it's uh, 302. 302. But... Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> It's me. Well, Stan. Yes. Oh, Stan, I, I was just going to call down to the lobby. So, Joe McLaughlin is your father's name, right? No, no, Stan, that's what I wanted to tell you. I'll bet. What are you doing, packing? Yes, I've got to leave. Now, listen, Stan, I can't explain now, but I'm in trouble. Real trouble. I'll say you're in trouble. You had a lot of fun stringing me along, didn't you? Oh, Stan, I wasn't stringing you along, really. Oh, don't really. feed me any more, Holcomb. The desk clerk just told me about that phone call you got from a Morris this afternoon. Oh, then you know. You bet I know. It was all right there in the message. You mean everything? Enough to figure the rest of it out. Joe McLaughlin is your father. Hm. Oh, of course he's not my father. Oh, well, at last you admit it. Nice trick to play on a guy. I didn't mean to trick you, Stan. Well, what about McLaughlin? Oh, McLaughlin doesn't mean anything to me. We're strangers. Oh, yes, yeah, strangers. The misunderstood wife. It's always the woman who pays. Well, it is, and it's the woman you ought to feel sorry for in this case. After this, I should feel sorry? Well, especially after this. Oh, what a thing to lose, all this color and gaiety. After what you've done, that's the only regret you have? Absolutely, the only one. Well, of all the cold-blooded... Well, what about McLaughlin? And what about the kids? Oh, what about them? They didn't think up the slogan. Oh, they didn't think up... The, the, there are kids. Oh, well, three of them. Three? Oh, well, four. I'm not sure which. You're not sure which? Oh, I never can remember things like that. Besides, what have they got to do with oh, it? Never in my life have I met such a stone-hearted woman. Stan! And to think I proposed... I wanted to marry you. I, I even bought a ring. Oh, Stan, isn't oh. there any chance for us... What do you think I am? Well, I'll probably have to go back and pay for what I've done. I, I should know. hope so. Well, but it won't last forever. Oh, no, it won't. No, it's supposed to, you, you know. You mean for life? Of course, for life. But it's so unfair just for one mistake. Mistake, huh? Didn't you know what you were getting into when you decided to become Mrs. McLaughlin? Well, yes, in a way, but it was just on the spur of the moment. Oh, I can believe that. And only for two weeks. Only for two weeks. Well, isn't that the usual time for these things? Not where I come from. Well, two weeks was plenty for me. Oh, I can't believe it. I cannot believe you would do such a thing. But I couldn't resist. It was free. All expenses paid. And that was all it meant to you? Well, that and a chance to get out of Finchville for a well, while. Well, all I can say is I'm glad I found you out before it was too late. To do a thing like that, just to get out of Finchville for two weeks. Well, I can see you've never been to Finchville. And I never will be. I've no intention of giving McLaughlin a chance to blow my head off. Blow your head off? You must think he takes things awfully hard. Most husbands do. Well, he won't give you a second thought in this. I'm the one he'll be peeved with. Peeved? Well, if he thinks about it at all. What kind of a man is he? Well, I understand he's, he's not considered very special in no, Finchville. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait, 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 just. Don't you have any feeling for him at all? Or at least for the children? Well, what's a thing like this mean in their young lives? Well, it just means they'll lose all respect for their mother. Oh, I don't know. I, I should think they'd be kind of proud of her. I'll bet you have no idea how much thought and imagination went oh, into no, this. Oh, no, that's all. That, I can't listen to any more. And to think I wanted to marry you. Oh, well, I must say, it didn't take much to change your mind. Much? Didn't take... Come in. You can say, didn't take much. Well, if it isn't you, Mrs. McLaughlin. Oh, Mr. Morris. And who's this? I was just Are calling. you part of this little intrigue, oh, sir? I take it you represent the plaintiff. I most certainly do. We have been deceived, defrauded, and held up to public ridicule. Oh, believe me, Mr. Morris, Mr. Johnson had, had nothing whatever to do oh, with this. Oh, no, no heroics. Oh, we never even met until I came to Bermuda. Is that true, Mr. Johnson? Well, and yes. And she misrepresented but... herself to you as she did to the management of this hotel? She certainly did. Very well. I shan't detain you any longer. If, however, my client should want your corroborating testimony in this matter, would you be kind enough to come forward? Of course. And here is my card. Thank you. Stan. Don't you speak to me. But Stan. You should be ashamed of yourself. I hope you get everything you deserve and more. But don't, don't you even feel sorry for me, Stan? The only person I feel sorry for in this whole mess is Joe McLaughlin. 
your husband. My, my husband? Stay where you are, young lady. But Joe McLaughlin's not my husband. And I know it. That was it. Stan thought I was Mrs. McLaughlin. That's why he was so furious. Then I take it you know why the board of the Sweet Tooth Syrup Company is equally furious. Oh, yes, of course. But well, you must let me tell him I'm not married. Stan! You can tell him after you get through serving your prison sentence. <gasps> prison sentence? I understand that's the customary penalty for grand theft. Well, I just want a little vacation. And you get one, I promise you. At the state's expense, Miss Addison. Well, can't you just let me find him and, and tell him how wrong he was? He thinks I'm married. Maybe he'd wait for me. A clean-cut young man like that wait for a jailbird? Oh, but he said he loved me. It wasn't you he loved, Miss Addison. Oh, it was. No. It was the sweet, honest girl you pretended to be. That's what he fell in love with. Oh, but if you just let me go after him and tell him... I'm sorry, Miss Addison. I'm going to have to turn you over to the police. <laughs> If I hadn't been so anxious to get out of Finchville, this would never have happened, would it? Perhaps not. Mind if I use your phone? No. No, I don't mind. Desk, I'd like to send a wire, please. I want to send... Uh, when... Yes, I'll wait. Finchville isn't really such a bad town. Beg pardon? Finchville. It's really quite nice. It's not, not very big, but the, the people there are friendly. I've never been there myself. I've lived there all my life. I, I went to grammar school there and high school. I, I worked... In a department store, and then, and then I got a job in the telegraph office just a month ago. So I understand. Do you know why I got a job in the t telegraph office? I can't imagine. Uh, operator, operator, op uh, young lady, I'd like to send a wire. Uh, yes, all right, I'll wait. I got a job in, in the telegraph office because a young man from out of town opened up an electrical repair shop next door. That's why. Very interesting. I, I don't even know his name, but he's, he seemed very nice, and I, I thought I might meet him if he ever came in to send a telegram. <laughs> but he never did. Hello, hello, uh, operator. Uh, young lady, young lady, I'd like to send a wire. Yes, good. Yes, I'd like to send a wire to Mrs. Ann McLaughlin. Mrs. Ann McLaughlin, 416 Wentworth. Young lady. Finchville. Young lady, I, I'd like to send a wire. Uh, I beg your pardon? I, I, I said I'd like to send a wire, if you don't mind. Hey, Joe, you got a customer. Get with it. Oh, Barry, did, did you deliver those messages already? Yeah. I thought you were going to paste up that other one while I was gone. Well, I, I, I meant to. I... You've been sitting there all this time? Yes, I, I, I must have been a... Excuse me, sir, I, I didn't hear oh, you. No, no, not at all. From the way you were staring at it, I figure that must be quite a message. <laughs> yes, it's, it's uh, a lady right here in town just won a trip to Bermuda, Mrs. McLaughlin. No kidding. Oh, say, uh, is that the McLaughlins on Wentworth Street? Y yes, 416 Wentworth. Oh. Do you know them? <laughs> well, no, no, not, not very well. I just did a little work for them on, on their television set. <laughs> New picture tube. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have the repair shop, you know, next door. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Joe, will you paste that thing up? Oh, oh Barry, yes, right away. Oh. I ought to get rich delivering a message like that. Uh, I'll, I'll just be a moment if you don't mind waiting, Oh, Mr. no, no, uh, not at all. Uh, um, um, Mr. Thomas, <laughs> that's me. Joe Thomas. I just have to paste this and then the... Joe Thomas? Yeah, why? Oh, well, that's funny. That's my first name, too, Josephine. Oh. <laughs> I, I just have to fold it up like this. Uh-huh. Put it in the envelope, and uh, that's it. Oh. Can I have it, huh? Oh, oh yes, Barry. Here. <laughs> Thanks. Well, see you around, folks. If they give me more than a buck, I'll buy ice cream for the house. Okay. If they don't, I'll buy it. <laughs> he, he's, uh, <laughs> he's a real, real cute kid. Yes. He, yeah, he's, he's swell. <laughs> you, um, you wanted to send a wire. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. Straight wire or, or, or night letter? Oh, well, uh, uh, oh, uh, well, a night letter. A night letter will do it, yeah. To whom? Uh, to, uh, to my mother. Mrs. Thomas? Uh, uh, yeah, Mrs. Thomas, yeah. That's, uh, 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 tomorrow's her birthday, you see, and, and I, 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 I don't lie very well. I, 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 I just wanted to meet you. See, I, I'm new in Finchville. Yes, and I, I know. Figure to settle down here, but I, I don't know anybody. Yet. I mean, I mean, I don't know any girls. Well, so. I, I know most of them. I could uh, introduce you around. Oh, could? Oh, no. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I, I've met all of them I want to right now. I, <laughs> at least I think I have, Josephine. 
Everybody calls me Joe. Oh, really? That's, that's what everybody calls me, too. Joe. <laughs> Say, that's going to be a little confusing. Confusing? Well, I, I, I mean, two Joes. I, I, well, I, I mean, if, if we should go out together or, or anything like that. I mean, uh, to, to, to a, a movie. You like movies? Oh, yes. Oh, because <laughs> I noticed there's one, well, there's only the one in town. Of course, they change the picture every two days. Yes, and it's, it's always a double feature, yeah, anyhow. Get to see two for one at a double feature. You know, you know, Finchfield's going to go crazy with this. W with what? Two Joes at a oh. double feature. <laughs> <laughs> They'll go crazy. Yeah. This is Robert Rockwell again. There's a cartoonist whose work appears in many of this country's papers who regularly has his characters doing some absolutely impossible things. Now, that's not strange for the funny papers, I know. But this fellow does it so frequently in his comic strip that it makes a lot of people angry. As a consequence, he gets a lot of letters of complaint. He answers them all with a form letter that goes something like this. The characters in my comic strip are mine. I created them, and they must consequently depend on me for everything. Realizing that I am responsible for their safety and well-being, I not only may, but sometimes am obliged to endow them with special talents or abilities in order to ensure them of that margin of safety and well-being. In a way, you know, that's like man's relationship with God. God is our author, and as such is our provider. It is he who provides that margin of spiritual safety and well-being. He does this by endowing us with enough grace to meet and overcome things which might endanger our souls. Physically, too, we must depend on God for the things we need, and we can obtain the physical things the same way we obtain the spiritual, through prayer. For prayer is the means our Creator gives us of requisitioning his divine help in obtaining our needs while acknowledging our dependence on him. Family theater suggests family prayer, for through it you gain still another benefit. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Flight to Bermuda, starring Dorothy Warrenshold. Robert Rockwell was your host. Others in our cast were Sam Edwards, Jay Novello, Larry Dobkin, and Paul Savage. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Gambler's End, starring Paul Picerni. Eleanor Powell will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.